One, two, three, four. So what's going on? Part three clarinets and saxophones. This is measure 79 to the end of Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm gonna cover a few things in this video, some challenging counting sections, some really tricky fingerings that you've got in this section, and how to break down your practice into a few different chunks to make your life a little easier. Let's start with the counts. I want you to take a look at measure 84. Focus in on beats three and four. You have an eighth note and a dotted quarter note. It looks weird because dotted, dotted notes always, always look a little weird, but it's really not so bad. Let's break it down for a second. If you watch the rhythm video, then you remember that an eighth note gets half a beat, right? Which means that four eighth notes means that that fits into two full beats of time, right? Because two eighth notes go into one beat, four eighth notes goes into two beats, right? So you know that those two beats are filled, which means that whatever happens after that set of four eighth notes, must be on beat three. Okay, think back to that rhythm video again. If you have an eighth note on a beat, that's taking up half of your beat. That's taking up half of your down up. In this case, it's just taking up your down, which means that whatever happens after that eighth note is on your up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So when you were looking at measure 84, beat three, is your first sound, that eighth note on its own. The and of three, the up of three, is that dotted quarter note. So if we wanted to speak through these counts on counts or on rhythm solfege, one and two and three and, or do day, do day, do day. I'd recommend counting it, playing it on a concert B flat, and then playing it on the notes. And I'm sure you're gonna be able to get the rhythm together. We'll talk about the fingerings in a minute though, because that is a very strange place for your fingers. Moving along, measures 92 and 93, one of the questions that I always ask myself whenever I see something like this, where does that tied note end? If we're looking at measure 92, in the uh, clarinet part, we have a B tied over the bar line to another B. In the saxophone part, we have an F sharp tied over the bar line to another F sharp. That note over the bar line in both cases is a quarter note. A quarter note gets one full beat, which means that you want to try to end this note just before your foot hits the ground for beat two. Let me show you what I mean. Here's measure 92 and 93. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Two, I held it out almost all the way to that beat two, but I ended it with enough time that I could say two with my foot hitting the ground. Here that is one more time. Ready? And. Two. I messed up a little bit. I went down to C instead of B in, case, in the case of my clarinet fingers, um, but the rhythm was rock solid there. So make sure that you're checking out those two rhythms and you've got them under your fingers accurately. Now let's start talking about some fingering challenges. And a lot of those are going to come from the fact that you have this lovely key here in the case of the clarinet, a lovely little C sharp key. In the case of the saxophone, that key would be a G sharp key. If you do not have your finger just about glued to that key, then you are going to have a very difficult time playing this section. If your finger's way up here, check this out, and I try to put it down, it's very difficult for me to do that precisely on the right key, right? 
But if I keep it right above where that key is, it's very easy, right? If I got it way up here, I mean, maybe I'll hit it, but maybe I'll hit something else. So the closer your finger is to that key, the easier time you're gonna have accessing that key later on. And we're gonna get to that in a minute, but first I wanna talk about a specific spot where there's another finger challenge. Take a look at measure 84. F to A, in the case of the clarinet, and C to E, in the case of the saxophone, is difficult. You have to go from not a whole lot of fingers down, in the case of the saxophone, no fingers down really, well, except for this one, all the way down to one, two, three, one, two, right? So practice that. Practice going from F, or sorry, from F to A, or from C to E. The more that you can do that, the quicker that you can do that, the easier it's gonna be for you to play this part. Next, put it back into context. And slowly start to speed it up. Before you know it, you'll be playing it as it's written, at the tempo it's written. Moving along, now we're going to start worrying about the C-sharp, G-sharp, depending on your instrument. Measure 86. You have to go in the clarinet from an F to a C-sharp. In the case of the saxophone, from a C to a G-sharp. That's not very fun. Be sure that your fingers are not like this when you're playing that F, or like this when you're playing that, um, that C, in the case of the saxophone. They have to be close to the keys, or else you're never gonna make it happen. Again, practice just going from F to C sharp, from C to, uh, to uh, G sharp, whichever one it is in your case. Just practice doing that over and over again. You'll notice that the closer you keep your fingers to the keys, the easier it is. Then again, just like in the other case, work it back into context. Before you know it, you'll have it up to tempo again. The last spot I wanna talk about is 93 to the end. You have these weird intervals jumping around. In the case of the saxophone, I think you actually have the harder part because you have to go from B to D to A to D to G sharp to D. You have to do a lot of this, going from not a whole lot down to everything down to a little less to a little more, right? It's, it's not easy. Practice it slow. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do, day. And before you know it, you'll have it up faster than you even need it to be. So those are my spots where the fingers are going to trip you up. Be sure you're isolating those on their own. Once you've got those down, I recommend chunking this into smaller bits. 79 to 83, that's the first spot that I would work on. Then 84 to 88, this is probably the most difficult part because of all those eighth notes. Slow it down, measure by measure, you'll be good to go. 88 to 93, again, not too tough. Just focus in on that note at 93 that's tied over the bar line. And then finally, 93 to the end. If you practice in those chunks and then put them all together, you'll be amazed at how quickly you've got this part under your belt. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Be sure to be using that practice track to make sure you know how this sounds in the context of the entire ensemble. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing these flip grids on Friday.